to start recording now. Thank you. Okay. So we've created our basic structure and let's go ahead and add a couple of dependencies. We're going to add more dependencies than you're used to um, because down the road you're going to add them. And to be honest with you, I just, I use them all the time. So we might as well get used to it now. All right. So we're going to start with express and I'm over here in the dependencies and we want the uh, lowercase express. And then it'll just install it here. And if you notice when you come to your JSON, it, it'll, it adds it right there in the dependencies. Um, so it's kind of cool. We can do it from terminal as well, but uh, let's see, what else do we need? Uh, We're going to do colors. That brings out my inner gangster. I can't help but say colors, colors, colors. Wait a minute. I don't like that. I don't think that's the right one. Colors, there we go. Um, we're going to do Coors, C-O-R-S. We're going to do helmet, like for your head. And we're going to do Morgan. And colors, scores, helmet, Morgan. That will work for now. Give me a thumbs up if you have those installed. All right, we're good. Now, let's start our index. So we're going to build out a very simple index. And then we are going to build things out in steps, but we have quite a few more things to use here. And we're, so we'll do it in multiple steps that will typically, um, that I typically use. And it's, that's a pretty good flow for creating node uh, apps, okay? So let's start with saying const express require express. So this is going to give us our HTTP functions and a lot of the goodies that we want. We need to go ahead and create a server. And so we'll say server is equal to express. And we're going to call that method. Um, we're going to create a port. So we'll say const port. And we'll be using a a uh, process called .env. And if you're not familiar with env, so that stands for environment. And those are the variables that you have access to. And we'll look at those as well. But for now, we'll just say const port is equal to process.env.port, again, all caps. And this first port, our const doesn't have to be in all caps. But since it's a constant and um, it's something that we don't change, we don't have something updating it, typically that's caps. But the process.env port is required to be in all caps. And then we'll say or 5,000. And under this, we want to go ahead and set up our listener. So we'll say server.listen port. And then we'll create a callback. And inside of this, we will do a log. And for now, we'll just do a very simple says, let's say server is running. And we'll save that. Let's go ahead and add NodeMon. So from the terminal, I'm going to say npm i dash d NodeMon. And let that install. I don't know how to do a development dependency over here. So <laughs> that's why <laughs> I'm sure there's a way if we research it, but uh, this should work just fine. And of course I got a typo up there. There we go. And once this installs, we'll create our scripts and then we will uh, do a couple of other um, set up in case we need it. Not that we'll be using it, but things that you'll want to do. Well, that's going, we can come over here and go ahead and say dot env. And 
and that'll give us the .env file. Okay. It says to refresh. Interesting. Let's see. Let's look at our package JSON. Okay. So it does have Nodemon in there. And notice that it created our main and a start script with Nodemon already in there. But we got rid of the source file, so we need to get rid of that. And we need to get rid of it here. And notice that our script is start. So we'll save that. And now it has started. And we don't need that. Dang, what did it do? Did I lose my, oh, weird. It created, it moved it into source again. Huh. All right. Well, we are learning on the job. Okay. Why well, it just went and changed up all my stuff, huh? Well, we get to do some troubleshooting. Let's see. Let's come over here and say, weird. Okay. So if you're getting an error, go back to your other terminal and it says server is running. So at this point, this is a fully functional server, although it doesn't do us anything any good. And so we're going to go ahead and extract some of the information. In this case, we're going to only extract one thing, which is the server. And we're then going to extract our routers from that point. So let's copy this. Well, before we do that, give me a thumbs up if your server is running. Good, good. Cat shaking her head. I have lag. I have lag, so don't don't keep up with me. Okay. But yeah, don't worry about it. All right. And cat. What error are you uh -oh. getting? Um getting uh app crashed waiting for file changes before starting okay did you uh, click on there huh? did you click on it over to the side and get a new terminal and do an npm start over there no i have not i'll, I'll do that yeah, npm that's... start mm -hmm. uh it says running let's see yes cannot get yeah okay yeah it, i guess it has i don't know what it what it does with the the way that it structures it but we should be good okay so let's go ahead and take our uh, our server and we want to go to our server js let's post this over here so here is where we're going to create our server now for all express apps everything that we're doing in express we need to go ahead and import Express again. Ah, if I can type and express. Nope. Try that one more time. And now we want to go ahead and export. Let's go ahead and do that. Module.exports server. And we can now run back over here to our, we'll save server, and we can come back over to our index. We're still getting an error because we have this server. Notice it's it's telling us, wait a minute, server is not defined. And that's because we need to import our server. And the path to that is dot slash 
API. Oops, and well, that was useless. Let's try that again. API slash server. And when we save that, we should be back to server is running. And we're getting this. I don't know why we're getting an express is assigned a value, but it's never used. And that's true. And we typically are now, we can remove that. Because that express app is being created here. Now, a couple of things that we want to add to that. So let's look at this .env. And one of the things that we need to do with a .env is uh, we need to create a .env file. But before we do that, we want to look at some best practice. So let's do a git init. And that creates a git structure so that we can you know, say git status and see what's happening there. And if you don't have a package JSON, of course, you would do an npm init dash y or an npm init and fill out the blanks. Uh, so we're fine there. The next thing we want is a git ignore file. You can create them. You can copy and paste. I choose npx git ignore node. And that will create a git ignore file for us. Well, hopefully. It says created one. But where is it at? Okay, let's do ls. And mm -hmm. I don't see it. It's not showing up in there. Okay, for whatever reason, it's not showing it to us, but it is there. And if we say, let's see, can we do a cat? Will it let us do it? We'll find out. Okay, good. So notice it created a, a getting nor file, even though we don't see it over here. And the important part that we want is that if you use the npx getting or node, it will include a .env uh, uh, file to ignore, anything with .env. The reason you want it to ignore that is that's where we put things that we do not want GitHub to upload to our account and share with the world. So things like private URIs, API keys, anything like that is what's gonna go in there. Today, we're only going to use it for two things. And so um, we need to say touch.env. And there it is. And here we're going to create a port and a node environment. Now, remember, anything in here is going to be capitalized. All your variables will be capitalized. So we're going to say port. I'm going to say 4550, just that it's different. So we it'll be easy for us to tell if it's working. And then we want node underscore E and V. And here, we're just going to say development. And we'll save that. We'll come back over here to our server. Oh, save that. And in our index, we want to go right to the very top and say require.env. And then we say dot configure. Just like that. So you, you can put this anywhere, but you really want it at the absolute top of your app so that everything below it has access to those .env files. And if we come over here and we console log, goodness gracious, 
There we go. And we say process and we save this and we just run this file. We say node index.js. It prints out everything that's in this process. And hold on, hold on, let me see one second. So the process in Node is like the window in JavaScript. So all the like the browser history, all those kind of things, this is what process has in it. And specifically what we want is this process.env.port. And we can, and we'll restart that. And notice that we console logged 4,500. And that is the process that we set up over here. Now, when you deploy your node app, this has to be there because the service that you use will not take the port that you assign it. They will assign it a port based on whatever availability they have. Okay, so this one is really important. So we can get rid of that. And now I'm going to make a couple modifications just because I like things, the, the structure. I'm gonna say new line. I'm gonna put a couple of stars in there. And then I'm going to say is running on port. And so we'll use our port. And then I'm going to say in and then I'm going to say process.env.node underscore env. And that's going to tell us what mode we're in. So you'll end up having a develop mo mode. You'll have a production mode. And like you'll have different tests, the different things set up for each one. And so it's kind of nice to see what you have going on. All right, we'll save this. And I'm going to hit control C and run and go ahead and do NPM start again. And so now we have server is running on 4550 in development mode. I love node and I'm not a creative person at all. And so front end is really just not my thing because I make stuff that's really ugly. I can duplicate anything that's needed, but I have not the creative genes. And so the one area of creativity in Node that I like, it's called colors. All right? You don't have to use it. There's another one called chalk that's similar, but for me, it gives me all the creativity that I can handle. So we're going to go over here to server. I'm just going to put a couple of... Uh, drops down and say require, oops. Actually, I'll do it this way. You don't have to do this. I just want to show you this. So I can say colors is equal to require colors. And that gives me access to colors, but I do not, unless I need to use this variable, I don't have to have it like we did with um, the .env. So I never put this in here. Feel free to, if you want, um, I just never do. And what that gives us is access to some cool little things. And particularly I'm going to, at the end of my console log, I'm going to say .america because America's cool looking. And now when I save it, notice I get this cool little red, white, and blue, but there's a lot of options. There's things you could say yellow, 
that turns it yellow so you can customize all your error messages you can do backgrounds um what's some of the other ones that i think of off the top of my head i think zebra is one and that does exactly what you expect it to do really hard on the eyes <clears throat> i must admit that sometimes when i have a front end that likes to be a little bit of a troublesome i use trap because <laughs> Have fun with those console logs, buddy. <laughs> Love your backend dev. And, uh, but generally speaking, I use America for my server connection and my database connections. And then I will customize red messages for errors, yellow messages for warning, green messages for success. Okay. And you can go to npm uh, js org i think and just type in colors and you can see all of the options that you have so it's something fun and that's my level of creativity so let's go back to our server and we need to add a few things and the first thing that we need to add is server.use express.json and this it will give us the ability to send JSON in the body of your request. Now we're not going to actually send a post today, so it's not going to matter, but just get in the habit of putting it there because otherwise you'll forget, you'll get some weird warnings, you'll think you've done everything wrong. In reality, it's because you forgot something. All right. The next thing that we want to do for now is we're just going to create a endpoint that will enable us to pass to the front end a status and show them that it's live. Now, <clears throat> this will be a question, a problem that you will get working in the back end, especially like build week. And you may have been in this position as a unit two or three, but you go to hit something on the API and you're like, it doesn't work, right? I like to make mine so I can say, hey, did you hit status? If so, then the API is working and you're making a mistake, right? I like to be able to pass that on and make it simple, but we know where the blame lies. If it doesn't work, then we know it's my fault. If it's working, okay, then they're doing something wrong. And so we're going to build one of those and it's kind of fun. So let's say server.get, we want to make a get request and we'll just do it at status slash status. And from inside there, we'll do our, oops, shortcut that doesn't work on here. Our homies, that's what a lot of people at Lambda School call it, the homies, rec and res. Uh, I don't know where it came from. Nobody else in the world, unless they came from <laughs> Lambda School, will have a clue what you're talking about if you do refer to the homies. So just be aware of that. <laughs> they may think you're a little bit off if you start talking about the homies. But for us, we use it all the time. And the homies provide us with the, I don't know how that got down there, the, the request and the response. So the request is what you send. The response is what you, okay, opposite for us on the back end. The request is what we get, right? So the front end is going to send us a request. And then what we respond with is what they see, right? And that's what gets published. So we're just going to start off with, we're just going to say, I don't like that structure. I like very clean, organized code. Um, if you work with me or if I help you on projects and your code is janky, I will say, let's fix this because I don't want to work with that until we get some organization. Organized code makes troubleshooting so much easier. So we're going to say res.send. Move my mouse so I can actually see. And we're just going to say hello real fast from Node. That's our version of hello world. We're going to save that. Our server is running. And we're going to come up here and hit status. So is the server working? Hit slash status. And if you get a response, then you know the server is up. It's a really nice way to make it easy to see if the server is running. So give me a thumbs up if you have your message when you say slash status. Because this is a good pausing point. All 
Pablo. Um, my page is still loading. Okay. The page that you've refreshed. Oh, no, the browser. The browser is still. Uh, the actual full browser? Yes. Okay. And tell me, is it? Let me run it again. Let me start the server again. again okay. Maybe yes. okay. And how do you say your name? Is Kavya? Hi, Zach. Yeah, I'm Kavya. Uh, for yeah. some reason, I get server.listen is not a function. Okay. That's a great one. So I'm going to stop screen sharing. Please screen share. Okay. And that's when you're going to come across a lot. And so it's a great opportunity to. Okay, learn. I'm going ahead and sharing. Yeah. Okay, so minus. So what that's telling you is that when you go to server.listen on index, it does not know about server. Yeah, and did I do the require right? Um, try saving your server file. Okay. Save all your files real quick. Okay. Is it not control S should I? Let me do this again. Okay. And make sure you save your ENV and your index as well. ENV, yes, okay. And the index control S. Okay. Okay. And now let's take a look at your server again. Okay. Scroll up this. Uh, oh, go ahead and restart it. Oops. All right. Okay. Let's see. Scroll up just a little bit. Then that typically means you have a spelling error for getting the same one. Okay. Ah. So that's already in use. So 4550 is already in use. They should have cleared that. It should have canceled it, but go to your .env and just change your port to something else. And it could very well be that they have something, somebody else uh, just spooled up on it. So just make oh, it okay. 550 so is fine. Save that. Okay. And then go back to your index.js and just hit save again. So NodeMon is not monitoring an ENV file, so it won't restart. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at it and see. Are you not running NodeMon? Yeah, I did install uh, NodeMon. Okay. All right. So it's up and running now. Now don't. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oops. Okay. And now go ahead and go to slash status. Well, when you see that error, it's usually uh, in your terminal, in the browser. In oh, okay. The browser just adds at the end, just make it status. Yeah, when you see that error, it's usually because you did not export it or you're not importing it. Yeah, that's what I thought, but then, yeah, um, yeah okay. And then Maybe case, that wasn't saved. Yeah, it wasn't saved. Yeah. And so now you're working good. Kat, how are you? Uh, well. <laughs> right. Let's look at it. Share your screen. Let's take a look. Uh, well, the thing is, um, because my computer is such. Ah. Uh, yeah, I, I am actually uh, using uh, Zoom in a PC and coding on my computer. I would have to leave the meeting ah. and join you back. Gotcha. Okay. So tell me yeah. what error you're having, or is it still spinning? It's still spinning. That's mm -hmm. what it's doing. Okay. Um, how about you close your code sandbox and then go back to it? All right, I will do that. Waiting for it. And, and Zach, how can I ensure if my node mon is running? If it is in the JSON, it should be, right? Um, yeah, if your package JSON says, if that's start. part of your start. Yeah, start. Mm -hmm. okay. And then it should, when you save it, you should not hit control C because it will automatically uh, okay, the start again. Stop. And, okay. Yeah. When it's fixed, it should give you a new, it should automatically start working. Come back. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, I have uh, restarted. I closed the, the browser. I open it up again. Um, on the terminal, I should just uh, npm start. Yes. Okay. 
one second. And it says that server is running. I'm going to try and open the browser. Oh. And it should be this browser that you have right here, yeah. right? Okay. Yes, I'm just trying to because I I pulled the whole panel up. Ah. I'm trying to grab it to get it done. I can't do it. But and I cannot see those other buttons. Okay, yeah, bad gateway. Yeah. Okay, and then now you should be able to refresh that. The bad gateway should go away. Okay. I'm waiting for it. So what we're going to do real quick, the next things that we're going to do is we're going to create our status that gives us more information. That's a legitimate endpoint. And then we will add the rest of our packages in then we will create a router with an endpoint that will re return as an object and that's what we'll wrap up okay. and so are we good cat or no no it's still loading uh but i get i get here a message saying that the server is running okay so let's go ahead and do this and then and it could just be you know with zoom and everything running um but at the end when we're done you can share with with me. You can hit share and send me. Matter of fact, I'm going to rename this right now. I'm going to say um, Web PT. You guys are 21, right? Mm -hmm. Basic uh, Express. And I will share this with you when we're done as well. So you'll have that and you can use it as a comparison. But if you still won't fire up, then you can send me the link and I can look at it. We can see what the problem is. All right. Okay. So we're going to, whoa. Weird. Okay. So we're going to create a custom variable and we're going to say, I call it current time, but you can call it what you like. And this is going to be a new date. And we're going to say to local time string. Now you can do date string. You can customize it however you want. Okay. I like it to show the time where I'm at, where whoever's hitting the endpoint is at. But you can set it to Greenwich, whatever you want um, down the road. And so now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the res.send. And I'm going to say res.status. I want to send it a 200. Remember, that's a good, right? Things are good. And then I'm going to say JSON. And inside the JSON, I'm going to return an object. And so I'm going to return status 200 again. I'm going to return a message that says um, server is up and running at and then I'm gonna put in our current time. And I like to do it, maybe it's just out of vanity, but I also like to do author, and then I put in there um, GitHub, makes it easy for people to find you, at Mr. Zach Smith, that's my GitHub. And so now, when we save this and we refresh, we should get back an object. Well, let's wait for it to restart here. Come on, Nodemon. Anytime now would be fine. All right, I'm going to refire it. It's just taking too long. And now when I re hit the endpoint of status, no, nope, it's come on. All right, so this is an interesting situation and a good troubleshooting spot. So it says my server is running. This is not changing. And how can we check that to see where the error is? It is it 
server side or client side? What do you think what would be a good way to test? Now, I'll with, let you guys the, off. Oh, go ahead. With the status. Okay, so there's a couple of ways. With the code sandbox, of course, we're not going to get a very good um, console log, so we can go to our HTTP client, for instance. We should be able to copy this, go to our client, and I'm just going to create a new request for now. Call it get express slash status and I can test it here and so it's interesting it's saying hello node right so that means that this is not updated now let's see if we can get an update oh good so goodness. node mon is not working Nodemon is not updating for me. So the second way that we can test is we can come right here and put a console log and just say slash status has been triggered, right? Mm -hmm. And so if this refreshes and hits, we should get a console log. And notice I'm not getting anything, which... Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just run node for a second. Let's see, instead of node mon, just to see what's going on with code sandbox. Oh, goodness, no. So clearly there's an issue because I can't even type. I'm going to refresh the web page. Yeah, same here. All right, create a terminal. Let's try this again. Node index.js status. And it's still not giving me anything happening with that. So it's like it's just froze out. All right. Well, let me see. Sometimes when you're working with online technology, you're just not sure. Okay, so we saved it. It did not restart. Okay, so now we're getting an error, which is good because I misspelled send. So it would trigger an error. Okay. I'm getting hello, Fred. Oops. Now I'm going to cons comment in my console log. Now, when I hit this, we should get nothing back. All right. Triggered. That's a good sign. But why it's still saying hello, Fred, I'm not sure. Because <laughs> it shouldn't be. Something is going on. Oh, yeah. Even when I have deleted the hello from node, it says the same. <laughs> hey, now I got it working. Okay. All right. So now yeah. we're getting a JSON back. Yep. So I just had to go for it. Just. Um, yeah, it's not working all that great. Okay, so now when I send, I get the status 200. 
We get the message that it's running at 250. Wow, I don't know where that's at. Two local time. That should be my local time. I don't know why it's giving me Greenwich Mean Time. Because it's supposed to be local. Let's see if I can get Nodemon up and running again now. Did yours finally start working? No, mine still says hello from Node. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so now mine's not acting up. So now it's acting, so it gives us the date, which of course is Greenwich Mean. I don't know why it's not giving me a local time like it's supposed to, something with how this is up and running. But let's just say that you get the point, right? What we're trying to accomplish. And well, let's get rid of this. I'm going to leave that in there so you guys can see that. Let's add a couple of other features and maybe we'll make enough changes that it will actually <laughs> grab our changes and actually update your web page. Okay. Um, Kat, are you okay? I know it's not working. Are you are you able to type? I can type. Okay. So let's do some middleware real quick. Let me show you something. So notice when I send, it'll, it tells me this information. And this is the header that comes with the, the get request that we just made. <clears throat> the one that we don't want is this line right here, powered by Express. We do not want people to know which framework and versions that we're using because it's quite simple then to say, oh, okay, what vulnerabilities are with Express and have this information, right? So we're going to make that where it does not show up. So we're going to come right here. And we're going to... Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm That's so sorry. Right. I thought I was on mute. Uh, I, I just got something getting delivered. I'll be right back. Okay. So we're going to say we, we, the extra packages that we had um, included, right? And so the extra packages were helmet. Yeah. And we're it's just- It's working now. Ah, finally. <laughs> finally. That's good to know it wasn't our code. <laughs> it's always a good sign. So yeah. we're gonna say helmet require helmet. Const Morgan is equal to Morgan to require Morgan. There we go. And more. Yeah, there we go. And cores. Now you don't have to know what they do except for Morgan. Um, you'll, we'll show you that here in just a second because it's really easy to see. All right, so these are the three we're going to crash because I misspelled helmet somewhere. Yep. And see how it broke and then when I saved, fixed it, it restarted. That's what it's supposed to do. Now we're going to go right under our server.use and we're going to say server.use helmet and we will um, instantiate that method we'll say server.use Morgan. And Morgan is a logger and it gives you several options. I'm going to choose dev. Goodness gracious, I cannot spell helmet to save my life. And then we're gonna say server.use cores. Now cores and helmet, like I said, don't worry too much about those, but know that they're there. Cores is cross oriented, I just blanked what it's what it stands for, but it's what will keep you from being able to uh, receive information from the back end. When you were React, you might have had that problem where it'll say there's there's a Corsair, and that Corsair is fixed by line four and line twelve. It's all it takes to fix it. 
Now our Morgan dev is pretty nice. We'll save it, let it refire like it's supposed to. And now when I hit an endpoint, notice it says that was a get request. It went to slash status. It was a 304, which is a redirect. It took 4.865 milliseconds. And for whatever reason, it crashed. It didn't redirect the way it should to give me my return. And none of that has changed. <laughs> So, uh, but that's what it's supposed to do. And when we fire our endpoint here, now notice by using the HTTP client, I'm getting a 200. It's not trying to redirect. And when I come here, notice now we have 19 elements in our header and the express and the information related to, to express have been sponged. It will also um, sets up for cross-site scripting forgeries and um, other security vulnerabilities as well. And that's handled by this line and this line. So you just made your app much more secure with the addition of four lines of code, the helmet and cores, and then the use and the use. All right. And of course the app is should be when I go to preview up and running and it's of course tomorrow. So the good news to that is congratulations. The world did not end today because we're already at tomorrow. We got one more day as it stands. So good sign. It's always nice to know that tomorrow is already here. So we made progress there. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to create a router and we're just going to make a simple get for our router. And well, then we'll hit that in, in point. Okay. And, um, and then we'll, we'll be done. So let's go to our routes and our books router. And here we're going to create our router. So we're going to say const. There's two ways you can do this. You can say express is equal to require express. And then you can say const router is equal to express dot router um i like code to be clean and efficient and all of that jazz so i i'm going to do it this way i'll leave that in there so you have it i'm going to say const router is equal to require express and then say dot router oops and that's a capital r for the router function the next thing we need to do is export. So make sure you do your export. And this is a good opportunity. I'm going to misspell router. I'm going to give it two R's, something I do frequently enough anyway, but so that you can see what the air looks like. And now, actually, let's just go ahead and do a router.git slash and here, we'll just leave it as slash because we're going to put it on a specific route. We'll go ahead and put in our rec and res and say res.send. And here we're gonna say hello from the router. Hello from the router. All right, and now we need to go to our server and import our router. And then we need to set the route using a router.serve. So let's see, I'm going to go right here above my server.use, but below my last import and say const router, uh, books router, because that's what this is. Books router is equal to require. And now we're going to find the path. And so we're in books. So we actually have to go up one, over one, and then into that. So that'll be double dot slash. And notice this is trying to help you out, right? And we want, oh, we do want the routes. Slash. And then we want books router.js. And now we're going to come down here and put in our routes. So we're going to say again, server.use. Server.use is the gateway 
to all middleware, server.use. And here we're going to put the path. And we're going to put the path in API slash V1 slash books. Now, this is just a series of folders, right? Or directories. And so we're going to go into the API. I put a version number in here. You don't have to do that when you start doing it uh, professionally and you work for a company, you'll use version numbers. Again, I think it's just good to have an idea of what's going on. And then this is the plural noun associated to the resource that you're creating. So, and then we're going to put a comma and we're going to tell it what router do we have at that path. And that's our books router. And we'll save that. I'm not even going to mess with this. And notice it says, wait a minute, right? Cannot find this. Let's look at our error. And the stack, it starts at the end. And what we have to do is get to the bottom. But sometimes it's really hard to find these errors because the one that we're really looking at is right here. And it's an object dot error, and it's in our books router JS. So if we go to our books router JS, we say, oh yeah, okay, there's the error. So we save that, <clears throat> and we get a new error, and it says router <laughs> is not defined, and it, it points us out to where it's at. But when you're confused, right? If you're not exactly sure where it's at you have to look in your stack for a file that's yours. CS loader, we didn't create loader, 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 helpers, server, so this is one of ours, and loader, right? And in this case, it's pretty easy to figure out this is where it's at. It's given us a nice highlight. But that error, you'll see a lot because it's very standard to forget that. All right, so now let's go to our uh, HTTP client. He, uh, Sean uses Postman. They're basically the same thing. I don't like Postman. I like the dark theme for one, and I like that everything is side by side versus top to bottom. I hate having my client small, and then I have to scroll to see the results. So I like Insomnia but they do the same thing. And I like the organization structure a little bit easier um, allows, than using collections, but that's my choice. Uh, so we can hit the server. It's running, it's still tomorrow, congratulations. This is why I like to use a time instead of a date. All right, so I'm just gonna go fix that because a time, then you know for sure that uh, something has changed. All right, so we got a time, 3.05 in the morning. And now to get to our books router, we have that path, API slash V1 slash books. And when we hit this, then we get a 404. Okay, a 404. Let's see here. Let's look at our books router. That's at slash and our server api v1 books that looks like the right path to me yeah let's see did they change something else on here that i don't know books so it doesn't look like it is api ah my fault. I needed that in there. There we go. Yeah, don't forget your slash in front. This one at the back is not really important. And in fact, I would say leave it out because here is the slash that would go right at the end of that. And you do need the one in the front always. So I'll save that 
and we fire our router is good and then of course our status is good and that's up and running it's now 307 yeah that makes sense and so that is how you separate your routers now we're going to do one more route just so that you can see the difference okay so because you won't ever have just one endpoint let's come over here real quick create a new file and we're going to say users dash router we will open that up again we'll do a quick router is equal to require which i can't spell and i can't type long day <laughs> and router make sure that's a capital and then we want to modules i got this new keyboard and it's like it doesn't move fast enough for me and so i always am like in in a different spot than it so this is also called router Let's go ahead and create a router.get. We'll make this also slash. We'll do our rec and res. And inside of here, I'm just going to say res.send hello from users. We'll save that. We'll go back here to our server. We will users router. And then we will require that. That's up to routes and user router, JS. And then when we come down here to our server dot use, we would say, if we're following the same theme that we have, API slash V1 slash users. And then we're going to use our users router to get there and what error are we getting server.user keeps trying to default to that save it that is good we come back to our handy dandy tool here and say api slash v1 slash users Did I do the same thing I did last time? Or is it just running slow? Yeah, I think that's a, let's try that. There we go. I think that's the one. API slash V1 slash users. There it is. I just didn't want to find it. And so hello from users. So this is how you separate having multiple routes to multiple resources. And we've just built a fully functional Node Express app with two routers, security, and even pretty colors in an hour. So any questions or anything you want me to go over before we end this? Hey, Zach. Um, uh -huh. So uh, the helmet and the cars, you mentioned it is for the uh, privacy, but the Morgan is for logging. I mean, is, yes. it, is it to detail the console logs that I see it? This, right? For here. each of the API call. Uh -huh. Okay. And yes. that is taken care of by Morgan. Okay. That is Morgan and mm -hmm. the helmet and cores are security related. Mm. Okay. Any other questions? No? All right, okay. so go ahead. No, good. All right, so I'm going to um, stop the recording.